Hi Taurus, welcome to your November 2017 astro update. It's Rena here. If you're wondering why I'm speaking so softly, it isn't because I'm trying to become an ASMR artist, although I may label this as ASMR to see if maybe I get more eyeballs to this video. But other than that, it's just because it's after midnight and I want to keep my voice low and not wake anybody up, okay? So what's happening in November for Taurus is really a beautiful thing. And it has to do with the seventh house. You're in the first house because we're looking at your chart from either the sun in Taurus or Taurus rising. This video is for both sun and rising signs. However, you do have to take into account that this is a general reading and that the transits may not all fall as I say they will because your degree of sun or rising will alter the results in some cases. But in general, this can be useful to just get an idea of what's the mood in November. And so the opposite house is the seventh house of committed partnership. The first house is the house of the self. And that seventh house is in the opposite sign of Taurus, which is Scorpio. Jupiter in October has gone into Scorpio and in, in, into that house. So for the next year, you can look forward to more opportunities to form partnerships, not just romantic ones, but relationships that are related to your career, related to any kind of client and the professional. And it can also be very good for legal matters. So ironically, even if you're going through a divorce, maybe even have anticipated having negative situations arise during court proceedings, they can actually go quite well. Jupiter is the planet of luck and expansion. And Jupiter is all about looking beyond the immediate environment and kind of exploring the world far and wide and you can even attract a partner that comes from a long distance and that's from a different culture than yours. But the point of why it's so beautiful is that even if your relationship, and this is like a committed partnership that I'm talking about, it's not somebody you just started dating, but if you're in a serious relationship with someone and it's not really going so well with Jupiter in the seventh house for the next year it could totally transform that relationship if it's meant to be and if you want it to be something better you may in some cases both decide that you're better off apart or you're better off friends and not lovers and that's fine as well your ruler is Venus, and you rule the second house of earned income. And yet Venus also rules this sector in the sign of Libra. And it's a different vibe here. It's all about kind of refinement. And this is great too for any kind of artistic endeavors and you may have popularity, you may gain popularity from the public with Jupiter in the seventh house. 
So if you rely on appealing to large groups of people um, for your career or if you aspire to do so, this can be a wonderful transit for you. And during November, there's going to be a new moon in the sector on the 18th of the month. So a new beginning in some kind of partnership, some kind of, well, I was going to say lawsuit, but any kind of legal matter and any kind of situation in which you rely on clients for your business. And at the time of that new moon, Jupiter's there, and so is Venus. Venus goes into Scorpio on the seventh of the month. And so Venus and Jupiter both can bring money to whatever house they transit. So this is definitely good for those people who are thinking of going into a partnership with somebody else or simply wish to amass a list of clients. This can be wonderful for that. And when you have clients, those clients are not just a one shot deal. They, if they like what you do, they may be the backbone of your business. If you play your cards right, if you do your part. So you can really establish yourself, Taurus, by having this. Um, and, and Jupiter supports Venus in the sense of being popular and appealing to others. And I think that is so important. Um, sometimes people overlook the need to be an agreeable person, the need to have a personality and to really kind of inspire others through your energy. And you can do that. You can be kind of sparkly and people respond to that very well. Now, I wanted to talk about the full moon in your first house, which is in your sign, of course. This is happening on November 4th. So when November 4th comes around, Taurus, you may have a sense that something is up. You may know that the jig is up and that a transition that may have been hinted at earlier in the year, that you know that change is in the air for you, and yet perhaps you've been resisting it in some way. Perhaps as a fixed sign, you are someone who would rather preserve the status quo, and yet you know deep down in your heart that you can't do so. Now, what I really enjoy now is that even though astrology is the first thing I studied, I'm talking about compared to the Tarot, and even though it's my first love, I have begun to flash on different tarot cards in my mind when I'm talking about astrological transits. And I immediately thought of the death card when I thought of this scenario on the fourth for Taurus, because it's like this inevitable situation. That's what the death card represents. A lot of people get simplistic and they immediately think of physical death. And it's not like that. It's all about transitions in life and how well do we embrace them or do we resist them? Do we try our best to prevent them from happening? And so something might come to a head around the fourth where you cannot run away anymore and you may have to look at yourself. The, the first house is the house of the self and full moons can be like this megawatt 
uh, flashlight shining in your eyes saying, deal with this, accept it. Don't try to deny that this is something that you need to change. And whenever there's a full moon, there is an opposition to the sun. And so Scorpio is definitely connected here, and that's the seventh house. So while um, in some cases, um, especially if the full moon was in Scorpio, we would say maybe the relationship is over. In this particular case, it's more of the spotlight on you and how are you going to own up to what you need to do and what needs to end, what isn't serving you and serving your relationship. And the more you can not be defensive and not automatically try to excuse yourself and just sit with it, the more you will gracefully um, ride this out and not just endure it, but actually thrive in it. And it could be something like you need to commit to a relationship for some of you. Maybe you are in love with somebody, but you're afraid of getting hurt. And yet the relationship is suffering because you don't trust that other person. That's the bottom line. And um, so see what comes up for you then. It could be very cathartic, actually. I also just flashed on the um, world card of um, graduation day, ending something in your life so that you can move to a new beginning. So Mercury goes into Sagittarius on the 8th, and this is the 8th house of sex, death, and other people's money. I do think that some of you will be signing contracts related to an estate or even a divorce decree that you are sharing resources uh, of some sort connected to a form of marriage. And, of course, there's other things like loans and, and things like that. Now, I don't want to neglect mentioning the sixth house because there is an influence coming from there. Mars is in the sixth house all month. Mars is like your personal trainer. The sixth house of health. Um, could see you doing something. I, I actually am re-recording this, and the first time around I said, maybe you're going to do aerobics because Mars is very vigorous in terms of the type of um, physical activity that it might represent. And then I, I thought to myself and I said, I don't, um, I don't hear the word aerobics anymore when I hear about exercise, but I do hear about cardio, and yet I have no idea what cardio is, and I made a joke that I'm a Taurus rising, and I said, do you get the joke? And we'll see if anybody gets the joke of why I said that. But um, anything that gets you moving, gets your blood moving, can be very self-empowering. A An author... Her last name is Judith, not her first name, but her last name, wrote several books on the chakra system that are like instant classics. Um, and if you really want to learn more about the chakras, definitely check her out. But one of her books, she actually talks about exercises that people with an underactive third chakra, which is the power center, can do. And one of the physical activities was jogging, you know, and you think about type A personalities and they tend to jog and it's very energizing to jog. It's just that getting into that groove where you even would want to do that can be the thing that is hard to 
get into. But the sixth house is also about your workplace. With Mars maybe bringing conflict to the workplace, some kind of situation, unrest, or simply that you're working very hard, that you're working overtime. All of these are possible scenarios depending on the individual circumstance. And um, so that new moon on the 18th in the House of Partnership is beautiful with um, Venus present and also Jupiter. And then the sun goes into Sagittarius on the 21st in that 8th house. And again, you are digging deeper. You are looking below the surface of life. You are being contemplative and more into wanting to know what life is about. You know, Taurus is such a, 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 um, a creature of their senses and the physical senses, obviously. And sometimes you have to balance that with the immaterial, not just the material. And this may be a time when you really touch base with the unseen forces. Speaking of unseen forces, Neptune turns direct on the 22nd in the 11th house of hopes and wishes and friendships. And since June, Neptune has been retrograde. And this may be a slap in the face sometimes to people who have harbored a certain dream that they, that's keeping them going that is kind of um, inspiring them to endure sometimes a lot of challenges along the way. And you may have felt like life stripped you of certain illusions during the time uh, of the Neptune retrograde. And that may have been very disheartening. And this could have also involved a particular group that you belong to or friendships, you may have felt like certain people let you down that you always could count on. When Neptune goes direct, it's going to restore that sense of idealism that really is important in life. You know, I, I think of John Lennon and he said, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. And I think the reason that song is so powerful or popular is what I meant to say, but it's also powerful is because being a dreamer is not a dirty word. It's something that means that you believe that life is not just about keeping your body alive and that you believe that you came here to do certain things and that it's not silly to want to do those things. And I think that it's going to be great when Neptune goes direct in the 11th house and you can go back to dreaming your wildest dreams because the more that you believe in them, the more likely they are to eventually come true. So Taurus, I hope you enjoy this. And if you'd like a private reading, you can find me at rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below. Otherwise, have an amazing November. Bye.